Now I fully recognize that if I'm going to keep up with the demands of a YouTube channel, I'm going to need to film whenever I get the chance. So welcome to beautiful snowy New Hampshire. Today I want to talk about two items that hit the news last week. And they reflect two completely contradictory narratives that are being pushed by the left and their puppet media outlets. The first involves Serena Williams, who did a Nike ad that spoke to the apparent inequity within women's sports, and the other, Martina Naravtalova, dared speak out and say that trans women, biological men, should not be allowed to compete in women's sports because it's considered cheating and it's unfair to women. Now, both of these people got completely different reactions from the media. Serena is a hero, Martina is a zero. So the Nike ad that, Mar that Serena narrated was based on an incident from 2018, or that was at least the background for this ad, was an incident in 2018 at the U.S. Women's Open where Serena was penalized for taking coaching from her coach who was sitting in the stands, which is illegal. She was penalized for that. She proceeded to berate the ref, call him names, threaten him, and smash her racket to pieces. And when people dared talk about her having a bit of a meltdown on the court, it was because she was a woman and because she was black. So it was racist, it was against women, because people dared comment, well, not all the media outlets, but the media outlets that still tell the truth talked about her meltdown. The other media outlets that are complicit in all this were singing her praises. She was so brave to stand up for herself as a black woman. So I want to show you a clip from the US Open to give you a bit of a background and understanding why this Nike ad was so brave for Serena to do. And then I'll show you the Nike ad. I'm going to provide some commentary on it. And then I'm going to talk about what Martina Naraptalova did and read an article from CNN about her greatest sin and suggesting that men shouldn't compete against women in the same sport. <clears throat> so take a look at this clip from the 2018 US Open, then I will show you the Nike ad, and we'll go from there. If we show emotion, we're called dramatic. If we want to play against men, we're nuts. And if we dream of equal opportunity, delusional. When we stand for something, we're unhinged. It's super, it's gonna need to calm down. When we're too good, there's something wrong with us. And if we get angry, we're hysterical, or rational, or just being crazy. But a woman running a marathon was crazy. Officials tried to pull her off the course. A woman boxing was crazy. A woman dunking? Crazy. Coaching an NBA team? Crazy. A woman competing in a hit job? Changing her sport? Landing a double cork 1080? or winning 23 Grand Slams, having a baby, and then coming back for more? Crazy, 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 and crazy. So if they want to call you crazy, fine. Show them what crazy can do. Now, if you watched that clip of Serena Williams at the U.S. Open, and you came away from that thinking that Serena is a victim of racism and sexism, then you probably viewed that Nike commercial a whole lot differently than I viewed it. You probably saw her as a social justice warrior, so courageous, pushing back against the male patriarchy that's holding down women. You see, I looked at that clip of the 2018 U.S. Open, and I saw a spoiled brat with a huge ego and an even bigger sense of entitlement. 
So when I look at that Nike ad, I ask the question, what is she belly aching about? She's a 23-time Grand Slam champion and worth a reported $180 million. Where's the inequity? And in order to try to prove there's inequity in women's sports, they fill that commercial with 20 women at least that are highly accomplished in the sporting world. Most of them worth millions themselves and live very privileged lives. I'm not buying the inequity. And maybe it's just me, but I actually don't find it crazy that women can do the things that were shown in that video. I don't find it crazy that a woman can dunk a basketball. I'm generally amazed at the performance level and skill of any professional athlete. I'm in my 40s, and I don't remember any time where women were not performing incredible things in the world of sport. Maybe there's some part of society that I don't see where women are downtrodden, that are oppressed and can't get into sports, and that you know very small things are expected of them. No, I think women are amazing athletes, and they do exceptional things. So I don't think it's crazy that they do those things. I don't get that part of the ad. So call me skeptical. Now the ad alleges inequity on three levels. First is around entrance into sport. So it points, it showed the clip of the lady trying to get into the marathon race and men or whoever it was trying to pull her back. What was that, the 1960s? I don't think women fight to get into sports anymore. They get into sports if they're good at it and if they have opportunity. Same opportunities that are there for men. So I don't buy that as an inequity. The other inequity is that women are held to a different standard. When they show an emotional outburst, they're called crybabies, they're called hysterical. Well, my reaction to that is, grow up, wipe your tears with your big bank statements, and go on with life. It's not like men don't get made fun of when they show emotional outbursts on the court. John McEnroe made a living freaking out in the tennis court, and he was called super brat. So I don't think women own the rights to being labeled with names when they're emotional on the court. I think it happens both directions. Now the other inequity, the one that I think does exist, is pay inequity. So women earn on average less than men in sports. Why is that? Is it sexism? Hardly. If you look at the performance level between men's sports and women's sports, all other things being equal, men perform at a higher level. That's not sexism, it's reality. And if you want to prove that out, take the best WNBA team, and put it up against the worst NBA team. The women will get crushed by the men every time. Why is that? Is it skill level? No, I think a woman can learn to dribble, shoot, and pass as well as a man. But if a sport requires strength, power, endurance, and speed, men are going to win every time. Not because of skill, but because of biology. And that even holds true in men's sports. Look at the NFL. It pays its players far more than players get paid in the Canadian Football League. Why? Because it's a far better level of football. Its quality is top tier. And people only have so much money to invest in being a spectator at sporting events. And they will put their dollar where it returns the most value to them. And they're going to put that dollar in high performance sports. So if people have a choice between watching a women's basketball game or a men's basketball game, they're going to watch the men's basketball game. There's greater attendance, there's better TV contracts, there's more revenue to share with the men. So there is an inequity in salary. The way I see it, all those woke feminists out there have two choices. They can either accept that men are bigger, stronger, and faster because of biology, or that women just aren't as good as sports. You make the choice, biology or skill. I think it might have something to do with biology, just call me crazy. So we have in that first story of the tennis player, the idea that there's inequity in women's sports. Women need to be helped. They need to be able to break through the restraints that are holding them back so that all levels of inequity can be solved. So let's keep that in mind. That's the narrative that's being pushed by that ad. Now let's move on to our next story, also featuring a tennis player. And let's see if I can pull these two stories together into a unifying point. So Martina Naravtalova, who was an 18-time Grand Slam winner, got herself into some trouble recently. And that's pretty hard to do when you're a female lesbian, woman and a lesbian. Basically, she checks two of the intersectional boxes. She's a woman, and she's part of the LBGTQ community. But she got in trouble, because being a lesbian was so 2015, now it's all about the transgender. Now here's the story, as taken from CNN. Tennis great Martina Narovtalova has been criticized after claiming it is a form of cheating for transgender women to be allowed to compete in women's sports. The 18-time Grand Slam winner wrote in the Sunday Times that it was insane that hundreds of athletes who have changed their gender by declaration and limited hormone treatment have already received honors as women that were beyond their capabilities as men. 
This is not the first time that Narav Talova, a gay rights campaigner who suffered homophobic abuse when she came out in 1981, has caused controversy with her remarks on transgender athletes. In December, she was criticized after tweeting, You can't just proclaim yourself a female and be able to compete against women. There must be some standards, and having a penis and competing as a woman would not fit that standard. As I read this, I realize how stupid, and I say stupid with an accent, how stupid you would have to be to accept the fact that a man can just say that he's a woman, and just by saying it, he's allowed to compete with them head to head and not have an advantage over them. To believe that, you abandon science and are completely blinded by your religion, and it's a religion. The article continues on. Her comments led her to become embroiled in an online in an online argument with cyclist Rachel McKinnon, the first transgender woman to win a world track cycling title in October 2018. Narav Talova, a nine-time Wimbledon champion, wrote on Sunday that this debate had led her to going away to do more research on the subject, adding, Well, I've done that, and if anything, my views have strengthened. To put the argument at its most basic, a man can decide to be a female, take hormones if required by whatever sporting organization is concerned, win everything in sight, and perhaps earn a small fortune, and then reverse his decision and go back to making babies if he so desires. It's insane, and it's cheating. Now is Martina crazy to suggest that biological males have a greater advantage than women? Not unless accepting science is considered crazy. The only crazy thing she did was to say something that was contrary to what our groupthink culture demands that we accept about gender. We must accept that by simply saying, I am a woman, makes me a woman. The power of words. It's like the theme for a Joel Olstein sermon. So why can an NBA team crush a WNBA team? Is it because men are more talented? Or because men are bigger, faster, and stronger because of biology? Now I thought it would be interesting to take a look at trans men and trans women that participate in sports at a high level. I was curious to see if they perform according to their biological sex. So if you are a trans man, a biological woman, you compete as a man or a woman, and vice versa. If you're a trans woman, a biological male, you compete as your, according to your biology or based on your identified gender. So I went on the web and I looked up prominent athletes that are transgender. And it wasn't very difficult to find a list of transgender athletes. It's very cool and hip to be transgender. And so there was a lot of articles on the web. So I found a list of 12 trans men and 22 trans women. So of the trans men, I then looked into each of those athletes to determine whether they play according to their biological gender or according to their identified gender. And what I discovered was that 10 of the 12 trans men, so biological women, competed as women in women's sports. Only two competed as men and they weren't very successful. One was a swimmer. She was very successful swimming as a woman against women. But when she went to Harvard and joined the male swim team, she did nothing. Wasn't very competitive at all. The other guy was a, another lady, was a triathlete in both men's sports and women's sports and was competitive really in neither. Then, if you look at the trans women, biological men, you know, 18 of those 22 have chosen to compete as women according to their identified gender, not according to their biological sex. So they're men competing as women, and they have been very successful in doing so. There's one that is a Canadian mountain biker named Michelle Dumaresque, who has been very successful in the races against women that he's competed in. I think he's won every one except for one where he finished 34th because his bike broke. Then there's Rachel McKinnon, a six foot two, 200 pound cyclist who has dominated in the women's circuit. <laughs> of course, he's a six foot two, 200 pound man competing against women. No inequity there, ladies. No inequity at all. Now, another one of these men competing as a woman is Phelan Fox. He's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins, one loss, fighting against women. He even succeeded in one fight in breaking a woman's skull. And this is a great example where not only is there inequity in allowing a male to compete against women, but there's danger. This guy lived 20 years as a man, not taking any hormones until his early 20s. So his body was fueled by testosterone since his early teens. His skeletal structure is bigger, his hands, his wrists, his shoulders, he can pack a whole lot more into a punch. It is dangerous to have someone like that compete in women's sports against women. Not only is it unfair, it's dangerous. 
You know, it used to be that if a man beat up a woman, they'd be thrown in jail. Now we will pay to watch a man beat up women and give them a reward if they win. That is ridiculous. Anyway, I found it very interesting that trans men, biological women, chose on average to compete against women. And trans women, biological men, on average chose to compete against women. So why do both of those groups choose to compete against women? Now, if you're a trans man or a biological woman, it is very difficult for you to be able to make a male sports team. And if you do make it, it's even harder to be successful. But if you're a trans woman, a biological male, you may be able to make a women's sport team a whole lot easier. And once you're there, you can dominate. And so many choose to do that. So again, I ask the question, does the higher level of performance of men versus women in sports, is it because of skill? Or is it because of biological differences that make men bigger, faster, and stronger? I suggest it's biology. If you believe there's inequity in women's sports, then be consistent and don't make it worse for women by letting biological men compete within women's sports because those men say they're women. Be consistent.